Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 everyone. Let us put the volume up. All right. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for everyone who is going to tune in to this live. And thank you so much for everyone who is going to catch the replay. As promised, I let you guys know that I was going to come and do my best to come every week and to discuss a particular subject with you um, that people who are going to participate into the coaching and the mentorship program are going to have access to. Now, the first thing I really want to apologize, I am live in my home country of Paul France, Haiti. It can be pretty chaotic. We have gunshots going around and I have a lot of dogs. So first, I really want to apologize if you guys are hearing any distraction behind the scene. Let's just concentrate into the particular topic. Now, I am running a coaching and a mentorship program. The program starts March 18. The onboarding of the program is going to begin next week. You still have time to come in and to ask questions, to participate. It is a six weeks program and as you are participating into the coaching and the mentorship, you are going to have access to two workshops development, nine written articles, which are part of what we are going to discuss. You're going to have access to a deadline calendar, meaning how to have a deadline calendar, how to make sure that you know how to set your weekly goals, your daily objectives, and your goal. You need to figure that out. This is how you are starting to become very successful to anything that you do really is to have clear goals, to be very focused, to have your objective. We are going to teach you. I am going to teach you how to get it done properly. I am also going to have a weekly call, a Zoom call, one hour during the six weeks. So you'll have access to one hour of Zoom call. You'll also have access to online books. You're going to have access to private coaching. It is a very rich program. I enjoy doing it because as I am working with my participant, I too put in the work and I get a lot accomplished during those six weeks. If you want to join and if you want to participate, please send us an email over at youth agency international at gmail.com now i do know that sometimes i have business people professional people that are also a part of my community so let's just say that you are not necessarily interested into having um into being part of the mentorship program but you really wanted to have access to some resources perhaps you are someone who would love to have access to the workshop development to the articles we can also provide those articles, those workshop development to you. You are free to send us an email over at youthagencyinternational at gmail.com and we can proceed. So now I am still very, very high off the Sunday live that I did with the incredible Natisha Brooks. It was such a loving conversation. I enjoyed it. And if you have not catch up on the conversation, you need to do so. It was impeccable. It was a really, really great conversation. Um, I'm still pretty much high from everything that we talked about, you know, everything that we could have talked about. You know, she is an amazing woman. She is a licensed therapist, a clinical therapist. She has so much wisdom. So, um, the topic that we are going to discuss is working on healing. Last night, I stayed up very, very late. Um, I felt that I needed to talk about it, but at the same time, I didn't want to talk about it. Um, 
I didn't really want to talk about it because I feel like there are so many parts of my life that actually needs healing. I am currently in the process of grieving and it is the hardest thing. And before I came on, to be very honest with you, I was, you know, doing my TikTok videos downstairs and a friend called me and I said, oh, I will, I'm not going to have the time to speak to that particular friend. And um, I said, I'll call them back because I knew that I, I wanted to finish with what I was doing downstairs and then to come to be able to come on live with you guys. And that individual sent me a message to let me know that their husband died. And it just, I just felt that it was added to everything that I had going on in the back end. Her husband is someone that I met a couple of years back here in Haiti. And he had been extremely kind to me. As a matter of fact, he befriended me before she befriended me. And he is a foreign person who had established himself here in the country and has businesses here in the country. Um, he loves Haiti. When I tell you that man loves Haiti, he loves Haiti. And I met him and I was always asking him so many questions about why he chose Haiti. Because as a Haitian woman, you know, we, they, they counsel us to not necessarily love our country, come back, invest, you know, open businesses. You know, people like myself, my generation, we are really shunned um, for being here, especially if we have the opportunity to do something different, right? So I really am blessed because as I was telling Natisha um, on Sundays, I have a lot of older friends. I've always related to um, people who were 20, 30, 40, 60 years older than me, believe it or not. So, you know, recently, because these people are a lot older, they are elderly, you know, they've started to pass away and um, gone to the other side. My other friend passed away last year and she wasn't that old. She was actually in her early 60s. However, she had been sick for quite a long time, um, just like maybe nine months or so she lived in Canada. And um, they figure out what she had very, very late. Long story short, she suffered two consecutive stroke. That is my friend that lived in Canada. And the whole experience of the doctors, of everything, has been um, just unbelievable for me. As far as like the way that she was treated, we we're talking about, you know, I, we hear a lot, um, especially as Black people, we love to portray how, you know, sometimes we are uh, mis mishandled, right? But a lot of times other people are mishandled. It says a lot about those countries' healthcare, right? So I was never able to um, talk about it. I was never able to talk about it because I have not digest that death. That is one. And the second thing is because out of respect for her children. Um, she was a person who was online, you know, she just like most of us or some of us, she had a YouTube page. I grew very fond of her very quickly. And of course I was always communicating with her via YouTube and our friendship just strengthened and got beyond the camera where we started to really like connect with each other, get to know each other. I loved that woman, a white Canadian woman who loved the harbor. She had a house by the sea and she just connected so much with the water just as myself. It was just like, oh, guys, I'm telling you, just being around her was everything. I mean, not even being around her, talking to her. So when she suffered the stroke, you know, her children, they are very old. Um, well, in their 30s, really, not so old. Um, they did let us know because she also had a community online on Facebook. 
So they reach out and let us know that um, she had suffered a stroke. I was so shaken that I didn't even pay attention to what the son had said. And I just listened to the part where he said that my mother suffered two consecutive strokes. And we are presently at the hospital. And I don't know, I just blinked. I just totally blinked and I thought she was gone. And I just fell on the floor. I started to cry. It's just like, un un until I, I, I literally was rolling over this floor and until I said, okay. And then I went back to listen to what he said. And he said she was at the hospital. She stayed at the hospital for a very long time. Um, which was, to me, was unbelievable. Um, they never let the woman leave. Um, she left the hospital only once. And of course, because of the stroke, she needed some support. So I believe that she went to live with one of her children. But the child that she lived with, all of her sons lived in the city. That woman lived way out in near the, the, the sea. So I knew as someone who connects so much with nature, as someone who loves nature, I love the water. It's probably one of the main reasons that I decided to come back here because, you know, coming from Massachusetts, it's just the whole lifestyle is different as island people, as Caribbean people, correct? So I knew that the whole setting was not it for her. She could not, you know recover because she is uh, just a water person you know she loves the water she loves the sea and they never allowed her to leave the hospital in the hospital it was one of those big concrete hospital where she didn't even have in one of the room uh, a window and the next room that she had the window only gave the views to buildings so imagine what that does to someone who loves nature just imagine what that does to someone who's connected to nature. It's like literally you are being killed because you don't have your habitat. You don't have your environment, right? It's the same thing with the gentleman who passed away. I mean, granted, he was, you know, older. He maybe was in his 90s. Yeah, definitely he was in his... Because when I met him, he was very old so but kept himself together and because of his businesses you know he's always constantly working and you could see that this is a man who took pride in the work that he did you know I remember asking him questions such as you know um he what what made you decide to come to Haiti and he told me he said I love to build I love to I love to he was more manual he's the one who let me know he was like I love to make things so when the opportunity came for Haiti around the time the lands were selling very very inexpensively because mind you I met him around 2013 and even so he told me that it was going to be very expensive to get like he wouldn't, the investment that he made at the time that he made those investment, he wouldn't made it. And mind you, his wife, whom is Haitian, was so against him having, you know, the business in Haiti. She, when he said to her, I, I'm going to buy property and I'm going to, you know, invest in Haiti. She, she really thought that he had lost it. Right. So, um, my, I just, as I, when she said to me that he passed away, I just said to myself, this man passed away because he went back to France. He's from Switzerland and, um, he died in France. And I know that he died because he was not in his habitat. They have a beautiful property up in the mountain nearby the sea and the Southeast side of, um, IT. So imagine that you know, you, this is, oh, this is, I got to remember that I'm on my youth agency channel and this is not politics, but just imagine that, you know, you are investing in a country and you are investing for your old age. I'm pretty sure that, you know, he didn't see himself dying in France. It's probably very cold over there. And because of the situation in Haiti, they, him and his wife, they usually do the back and forth. But he had been in the last probably 10 plus years a little bit more stable in Haiti 
than even in um, St. Martin because they have also property over there, right? So you could see that maybe he connected more with Haiti. And just for him to not be here, to not have, have his comfort, his habitat, to be in France where probably it's kind of like the care that he's getting is just not the same, right? You're elderly here in the Caribbean. All you need is people around you. You got people to feed you. You got people to close you. It's just not the same lifestyle. So, you know, I was just thinking and I said to myself, God, like he probably died because he was outside of his habitat. He was back in France where it's like, you know, usually these people, if they're going to travel to Europe, they travel to Europe around the summer months, the spring months. They don't travel to Europe like around the winter time. They are elderly people, you know, so that's another added baggage, another person that I have to grieve. And last, this year, last year in October, I lost my cousin. I lost um, my cousin who was a cousin sister, right? And to be very honest with you, I don't even think that we're going to stay on that because I cannot process her death. I haven't processed her death. It is very painful for me. It is, I haven't even cried. I haven't grieved. I haven't accepted that she's not here. I haven't. It was quick. It was fast. You know, it's it's one of those death that you would categorize as unfair. I saw it coming a mile away um, because I don't believe that she wanted to accept her fate. Her husband had died a, the year prior to her. He died in May and she died um, in October of the next year. So I don't believe that she really um, accepted her fate. I don't believe that she faced she wanted to face her reality. I think so. I think that's the right way to say it. Um, now that's a discussion for some other time when I'm ready to talk about it. I do believe that I should talk about her death um, in the manner that she died. This is really, I, I would have never, it's, it's, it's beyond me. To be very honest, I would have never in a million years believed that I would have lost those two people, her and her husband, in those conditions. I wouldn't not believe that in 2024 that someone like myself would have to face these type of death. And for me, that says a lot about the country the culture of my country, the mindset of the people, um, everything. My cousin spent all of December 2023 with me. She had come here to um, greet my parents and she came with her kids. They have three children. And we are very, very close because she literally saw me grow up. She, she, you know, she used to do my hair during the summer months. She used to bait me <laughs> when my mom would want to spank me. She would always be in between my mother and myself um, to be sure that they don't spank me or they don't spank me hard enough. I stole her lip gloss because they were much more older than me. So when they started to put, at the time it was not makeup, it was just powder and a little bit of a lip gloss. I would steal their lip gloss. When um, she started to get a little work, they would buy a lot of stuff for me. Um, my cousin came and, you know, we sat, we spent the entire day together and we talked, we talked it never dawned on me to ask her, um, you know, anything about the husband. Like, 
it, it just it never dawned on me to ask her if she knew what happened to her husband um he got sick right um and he went to the hospital he stayed at the hospital for one week and then he passed away like i said to you guys before i have to feel ready to come online and um, discuss those things it's just i just don't have the words to really um to say certain things i i just, i'm not ready so this is why i didn't really want to talk about working on healing as a topic and also you know, when I started to talk to Nini, Leticia Brooks, the lady that I had a conversation with, initially what I really wanted to do was try to see how she could be a part of the mentorship program. Because the mentorship program, I decided to have it and to give people my area of strength, right? My area of strength is my ability as an entrepreneur, as a creative person to stay very focused on my goals and my objectives, to teach people how to utilize their creativity and to be very productive with what they are doing, correct? But what's the real reason when you're coaching? Like I, when I started my coaching and my mentorship, I literally counseled people and let them know that I was not a therapist that their emotional problems, I would not be able to deal with it. And I don't really believe that I wouldn't be able to deal with it. I just felt like I didn't want to have to take on those things. I didn't want to have to, to counsel people on um, issues that they were having, perhaps because I too, in my journey, in my growth, I am going, I have gone through so much that, you know, sometimes when you speak to people, it triggers you, right? So I never really wanted to talk about it, but what's the real reality? Well, the real reality is that you can't really mentor someone and teach them how to be successful in their career if their emotional aspect is not okay. Are we here? So if someone's emotion is not stable how can they be successful with their career with their creativity your mental has got to be up to par many people ask me how are you able to do what you do still go about your day and continue to put in work when your country is going through what it's going through well the very first thing is that I have learned to teach myself that there is very little that can be done at this particular moment for someone like myself, meaning that whatever is going on in my country surpasses me. I don't have the safe soul in what, how the country is going, but life goes on. Every day I have to work. You know, life goes on. So it doesn't mean that I'm compartmentalized. We're going to talk about that. So I'm just blocking it. No, when I don't feel well, I'm not online. You know, when I don't feel like, okay, I reach out to like-minded individual and I do discuss the issues of my country. So I do get the support that I'm supposed to get. I do seek a little bit of a therapist, even if it's not professional, but from people who are also here, or even if they are not here in the country, they can counsel me, right? They can give me some re reaffirmation. They can, you know, sympathize with me and encourage me, right? So I've learned to do that. So as a mentor, you know, I get clients and participants who are not able to strive in their career because the emotional aspect needs some work. The mental aspect 
need some work. I can only imagine the state of the mental of the people of my country and maybe your country too, wherever you are, wherever you choose to. The state of the world, if we pay attention to all the negativity, it will affect us. And this is why you have people who develop a lot of physical ailment because of their mental ailment, right? So tonight, I really wanted, I really felt because it, I don't know, it was just the topic. I try to run away from it. I try to not talk about it because of what I've just shared with you, because I just feel like I too need to heal. I too have a lot of like aspects of my life that needs healing. But for a particular reason, it was the topic that I had to discuss. So this is what we're going to discuss, right? Working on healing. So I'm going to read for you. Now, remember that when you participate in the mentorship program, you have access to nine written articles, right? So working on healing will also be a part of the article that we are not only going to give to our participant, but help them with, right? So let's, let's, let's read what I said. I said healing is the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. This is from the dictionary. It is to become free from injury or a disease. It is to return to a sound state. Healing is to become well. There are different types of healing. There is the physical, the mental, and the spiritual healing. Mental and spiritual are kinship. You cannot heal your mental if your spiritual isn't healed. Absolutely. They go both hand in hand. Your mental healing and your spiritual healing. You Because mentally, it's connected to your spirituality, right? So a lot of times... You know, those doctors, they like to put a lot of stuff in our mind and tell and diagnose you. <laughs> Just yesterday, I was watching someone online and she was saying how she was bipolar, schizophrenic. And I said, have you ever considered not saying those things about yourself? Because words have power. So a lot of times, you know, even with your children, you got to be very careful about what you keep on teaching your children. Like, let's just say you take your child to a, you know, a psychiatrist and they diagnose your child. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Everybody has their own way. But if it were me, I would take on that diagnosis. I would research about it or even yourself, right? I would not only research about it, but then I would actually not take on this on me. Like, I would not repeat these things. I'm telling you, like, this, you know, you have to be careful with what doctors are saying. Not to discredit any medical doctor. But you know what? Spirituality has such a powerful effect that if you can tap into your spirituality and you develop your spirituality that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not gonna, you know, be physically ill. I'm literally recovering from a cold, right? <clears throat> we are humans. We're going to get sick. But that means that there are certain type of sickness that you will overcome. You're not going to stay and having all these pills and taking on those medicine that eventually are going to put you to the grave, right? So I said, you cannot, um, your connection with the divine. So I said, your connection with the divine is what will give you the strength and courage to heal your mental and start cultivating positive thoughts about yourself. This is exactly what I talked about. Your connection with the divine they don't teach people these things because, you know, drug, pharmaceutical thing, it's a lot of money there. So they would rather <laughs> diagnose you 
give you a prescription and continuously have you take on pills that are eventually first they're not gonna have you know when you take a medicine and you take it for a long period of time it no longer has the same effect on your body because your body becomes resistant to the medicine and then they switch you to another one this is why people are sick outside it's like you go from this medicine to that medicine and sometimes all you need is to disconnect sometimes all you need is a different scenery Sometimes all you need is positivity. Sometimes all you need is a good laughter, right? Sometimes all you need is just to be, right? So for me, I can only teach people what I've done, what has helped me, where I've seen the progress in my life. And your spirituality, that connection with the divine, that is your ultimate blueprint. Okay. So I said your mental is your safe haven, correct? It is where you nourish your thoughts. In order to heal your mental, you must learn to love who you are. By loving who you are, you will value your being. By valuing your being, you will create a positive relationship with yourself. By creating a positive relationship with yourself, automatically you elevate your life. Should I read this again? I feel like I should. I feel like this was really nice. Let me read this for you. I said, your mental is your safe haven. It is where you nourish your thoughts. In order to heal your mental, you must learn to love who you are. By loving who you are, you will value your being. By valuing your being, you will create a positive relationship with yourself. By creating a positive relationship with yourself, automatically you elevate your life. If I have a token for the way that my life has changed over the years, especially in the last three years, Coming into 2024, every day, I think my relationship with myself. Now, what I'm going to ask for those of you who are going to rewatch or watch, I'm going to ask you to, once you're, you're there, and be honest. How is your relationship with yourself? The way that you treat yourself. The way that you value yourself, is it the way that you value the next person? Do you treat yourself the way that you treat your friend, someone that you love, your children, your spouse? Do you, do, do you have that same patience with yourself? Do you have that same love for yourself? Are you kind to yourself? A lot of times we are not. We treat ourselves with roughness, right? We get up, we rush, you know, we don't even brush our teeth sometimes. We're always in a hurry. It's like your entire physical appearance reflect the fact that you're not kind to yourself. I have such an ease in my life, guys. I just cannot tell you how happy I am and how proud I am because the lifestyle that I have I had to teach myself. This is not a lifestyle that I was taught. My culture, and even with the U.S., you know, it's in general, they teach us how to be busy, right? In general, they teach us how to, it's like, every day you got to get up. No, that I don't want to live like that. <laughs> I'm okay. I want to live a good life, a beautiful, a life of ease, Years ago, when I was founding the youth agency, I had a lot of people who counseled me because I love to talk to other people. And there is a woman who said to me one time, she said to me, a lot of time your job is not your work. She said to me, a lot of times our job is just a job. You know, some uh, it's something that you do to acquire money. But she said to me, your work can be something that you do in purpose. 
right then and there, I remember telling myself that I never want to have a job just to have a job, you know, to work just for the money. There is no love. I mean, for the money, money is something that you spend, correct? We acquire money to spend, to buy stuff, you know, for trade. But to have a life where something that you do every single day, you hate it? Oh my God, I could not. You know, if I was really that person, I would still be in the U.S. I would never be doing this thing in Haiti. So what keeps me going is the love that I have for it. It's very late in the afternoon right now. It's probably 6 p.m. I haven't ate. I only ate around noon and it was noodles. And I went downstairs. I wanted to do my creativity, but I knew that I wanted to commit. Why? Because I love to give out and I felt like someone, even if it's one person, is going to enjoy and get something out of this that I'm doing. A lot of times, you know, the pay is the reward is the, the, is what you feel. A lot of you are not connected to your feeling. This is why you have a bad life, a horrible, a terrible life. Because you're doing things for the cash. You're doing things. Whereas you'll be very surprised that if you are able to use, utilize your skill set, your naturally gifted talents, you're not only going to do something, things that you love, but it, I have always worked and I love to work. But it's such a different feeling when you put out a project and you can see the project come through and you get paid. It's like, what? People are actually paying me? It's a whole different feeling. You feel like, you, you feel high. You feel like people trust you. When I launched my mentorship program and people started to write to me, and not only that, when they were finished, the, the, the reply, no amount of money could pay the feeling that I have. It's important that you connect with yourself. I love the way that I live right now. I have a schedule. I have every day I work, but my work could be cleaning, deep cleaning. It could be a day that all I'm doing, I'm cleaning. I'm not taking in calls. I'm not working on anything. All I'm doing, I'm cleaning. And then after that, I'm laying down, I'm having a glass of wine, or I'm just like having tea, whatever I'm doing. And that's my day. There are days where I know if I'm ovulating, it's going to be one of those weeks and I need to stay quiet. I need to relax. I need to pray. And it's my off week. Do you believe that I would have had this lifestyle if I didn't have a better connection with myself? I treat myself very well these days and I feel amazing. Even with cooking, I don't necessarily like to cook. I really don't. <laughs> I don't necessarily like to cook, but I love the feeling of knowing what's going inside my body. I love the feeling of cooking for myself because I know what I'm putting inside of my body and I know what I'm doing out of love. A lot of time we eat from people who are cooking fast, who are cooking this and that. And yes, it's great to dine out, to order out, but cooking for yourself is also part of your self-love journey. It really is because I feel great when I'm able to put something in my mouth that I cooked. I just feel like, oh, I like it. You know, I don't do it every, every single day, but I try to do it every day these days, right? So I said as an exercise, well, actually I'll leave the exercise for the people who are part of the mentorship program. But you know, since I'm doing this, let's just say, write five things that you admire about yourself. So that's an exercise for you. So write five things that you actually admire about you. A lot of time you would be surprised how people struggle with that. So let's talk about spiritual healing. Being spiritual is having a strong connection with the divine. No matter your culture, your gender, your background, 
we all have the ability to connect with the divine. We all have the ability to hear the voice of our spirit guide. We all have that ability. It is important to work on strengthening your spiritual connection because you will automatically strengthen yourself and your being. Your spiritual armor protects you from negative thoughts, negative energy, negative words, and so forth. Mm, let's read this again. Your spiritual armor protects you from negative thoughts, negative energy, negative words, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure like these days, you know, I mean, listen, you are work, people are, just listen, people are not going to like you for their own reason, for any and everything. So it's very important to strengthen your spirituality because you strengthen as you are working in your spirituality, you're working on your spirit, your spirit guys that are always with you since birth. They're always here. They are with us. They are around us every day. <laughs> but some of us are able to hear and see them more because we have developed and strengthened those abilities. And what happens is that when another person is looking at you and automatically that person has a negative thought, right? Or that person says something and negative thoughts can be very damaging. But because your spirituality is so high, Send back. It doesn't do anything for you. Whatever comes at you, especially for those of you, meaning myself, excuse me. I I don't I have very little interaction with the outside world, and I don't want to have any. But there are many of you who every day you interact with other people because every day you get up to go out. So imagine every day you're going out and you don't have a spiritual armor. You, you don't have a spirituality. It's not necessarily going to church and that only day Sunday. Uh-uh. It's your connection. It's, it's the way that you connect yourself with the, with the gods. So imagine every day you're going out and the level of negativity that you absorb. Do you know that spiritual attacks are very real? They make you weak. They make you sick. They, they, they penetrate your own thoughts. So let's just say here you are, you have a great idea. You want to do this. You want to do that. And you are sharing it with another person. And the person is telling you, oh, yes, you know, it's great. Do this. But inwardly, that person is not happy that you actually have that amazing idea. And they're sending you dark energies. They're sending you, you know, just nasty energy. So imagine that. Imagine that, but you don't have any protection. So here you are a couple of weeks down and you feel down. You feel like, oh, I don't really want to do it. You feel unmotivated. It's other people's energy, what they're saying to you, the way that they're pushing their own thoughts on you. You have absorbed their own thoughts. It's so powerful. This Let, let me just tell you, it's so powerful what I'm saying to you because you have to learn your thoughts. Are you? Are, are we here? A lot of the time, people who end up killing themselves is because they are listening to other people's thoughts in their mind. You have to learn how to differentiate and know your thoughts. Like, catch what you're saying to yourself. Is that me? Would I have really said this to myself? Would I have actually really said this? Trust me, it happened to me recently. You know, I have, when it's time for me to work, I'm pretty busy, honey. When it's time for me to work because a full day, I work a lot online. So sometimes I have to get up at six o'clock in the morning, you know, take my shower, take my coffee, cook my breakfast, cook my lunch. Everything has to be prepared so that when, when I'm done in between, I can just grab a little something to eat. And then this one, the, recently I was like, mm, I don't want to get up, like not wanting to get up around like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning to go about my day. And I said, hold up. Where did that come from? 
that's not the energy that you started the year. You started the year on a high note. You were online. You were doing your thing. You, you do your own TikTok. You're motivating yourself in order. You don't want to get up. I said, is this you? And then I prayed about it. You have to learn how to pray about it because it's like you, you know, it's a major year. You don't, when it's time to rest, I rest my body. I do rest my body when it's time to rest, but it's kind of like, where is that coming from? Are we, are we understanding? So understand your thoughts because depression, depression, someone told me years ago, they said depression is a spirit. And I believe that for you to be depressed, for you to feel like you're unmotivated, for you to feel like I don't want to do this. It's, it's a, it's a negative spirit. You got to shake yourself out of that. I used to feel like that when I lived in Boston a lot, especially in the winter months. I just, ooh, I hated it. It was dark. It was gray. It's like it's raining constantly. I can't see the sun. And all of those are reasons why I was like, I'm not, why would I have to, why, why, why live in a place where I'm not happy? See, it's crazy in Haiti, but if I have, to, I can't wake up and I'm looking at through here, I'm looking at directly at the top of the mountain. When it's like nine o'clock, it's blazing nice and sunny, and I'm very happy about that. Right? And this is not even it, as far as like the way that I want the experiences that I want to have. I want, you know, to travel. I, I want to be able to. The best thing for me is to be on top of the mountain and have a cup of coffee as the sun is rising. It's everything for me. Right? So you have to. Know that. Be really cautious as far as like your thoughts, as far as like knowing what you would say, because people can penetrate your thoughts as well. So I said strengthening your spiritual connection helps to elevate your mind and follow your path. Everything works hand in hand as above, so below. People who fail to cultivate their spiritual healing, no matter their status in life, are miserable. They lack inner joy. Mm -hmm. They lack wholeness because they are only operating at the surface. Their soul is empty. They lack energy. It's really important, for example, to, you know, kind of like shake things off. Do even if let's say you're working and you know maybe the job is not it and you just feel like mm, I could do something else. Have a hobby, have a hobby that you want to do. You know, have something on the weekend that you're going to enjoy. It's something for you. It's your little hobby. You know, have that going on. Now let's talk about mental health. Very very important mm -mm -mm. because these days we all need some support with our mental health. The way these people have us going crazy, if we paid attention to, to them, there would not be enough psycho, psychiatric facilities to help us, uh, the way they have us, right? So I said that mental health comes from trauma that has not been healed. Mm-hmm. Mental health comes from a trauma that has not been healed. Such trauma can be um, done or as a such trauma can be done as a child. It could be environmental, physical, etc. A trauma that is not healed repeats itself. Sometimes with others, at times it becomes generational it becomes generational when you not only have not healed, but also transmitted your trauma to your kids. They call it mental health issues when you have internalized your trauma and repeat it constantly in your mind. I am not a licensed um, therapist. I wrote this based on what I just felt that people who had mental health issues went on. Of course, you know, listen, 
every single day I reparent myself. I just feel like maybe not as a grand level, but there are a lot of things that I'm doing now with my life that my parents did not teach me. And if I had let myself gone, I too would have suffered some severe mental health. I probably would have been one of those kids or those adults that would be bitter, angry, because I do come from a family structure where I am an outcast. That's okay, because I feel like I'm a, I was adopted anyways. <laughs> I never really related to my family members, you know, because I just did things on my own at an early age. And when I chose to come back to Haiti and I chose to do things my way, there were a lot of things that came forth, even now, even still now. But I have learned to not only have resources, I'm a lot more older, a lot more wiser. Thank you, God. So if you are young or maybe a little older and you're going through it, trust me, um, as the years go by, you can seek the resources as well and you will feel better. You will feel more apt, you know, to um, deal with those issues that depending on the families that you come from. A lot of times you have to reparent yourself, literally reparenting yourself. But you know, if I had internalized all my pain, if I had internalized maybe the way that I felt and not, I, I always talk about the fact that, you know, I do come from a family where I am an outcast. I'm not ashamed to say it because it's the truth that I don't relate to them, right? But um, some people are afraid. Some people are ashamed to talk about that. Doesn't mean that they are bad people. No, they're not. You know, we're just very different or maybe not so different. Maybe I'm more just a person who is unafraid to live my life the way that I want to live my life, right? Um, a lot of times we go to trauma as children. You know, stuff happens, dark stuff. You know, I mean... You know, I had a good childhood. I didn't have a bad. My mother used to hit us, but hey, you know, Haitian people hit kids. But, you know, when you hear about some children and what they go through, it's, it's unbelievable. So a lot of times we marry people, we are in a house with people where we don't really know them, right? You don't know your spouse. You don't know their background. You don't know what they went through as kids. And if they never treated themselves, if they never sought therapy, if they never talk about it, then they in internalize everything. So you start seeing those behavior when you live with people. You start seeing the, you know, the effect of those trauma when these people have children. When these people have children and the way that they treat their children, you're like, yeah, because they never really sought support for, for the fact that maybe they suffered things as children. Listen, I was just saying this to myself. Nothing is perfect. You know, there is not really any book on parenting. I'm not a parent. I haven't, you know, really, but it's not written. So don't feel bad if you feel like you have children who feel like you never, you, you the way that you parented them was not the best. You know, my parents focused a lot on academia. They focus on stable financial stability. Um, but I feel like, you know, they lacked a lot, especially in my care. I feel like my mother lacked a lot with, um, you know, suiting us. She lacked a lot with, you know, having that connection with us. She lacked a lot with, you know, understanding me. I'll just say me, right? You know, but, uh, you know, she's also a woman who grew up without her own mother. So do I give her grace? I do. Even if maybe she thinks that I don't, but I do. But see all the work that I have to do with myself in order to have my mental where I need to have my mental. And even I, as far as like, you know, recently I was doing some work with, um, you know, in other organization. And as far as like understanding where 
all those commotion. You know, when I first moved back to Haiti, it was a hell living in this house. But now I understand why. Not only was I always rebellious, so me and my family, even as a kid, it, it was not like they didn't have it easy with, and I didn't have it easy with them. But now I'm, I'm coming back into a household, correct? And I had lived for 10 plus years in the USA and I'm coming back as a 26 year old and I'm thinking to myself that I'm an adult in my, listen, now I'm 40, they still don't consider me as an adult, okay? And those are different generations. We're talking about people who have different upbringing. They have different sets of goals, different sets of values, right? And here I am. And I had lived in a different country. So I'm acquiring other vision, other values. So it, that you, you see that cultural shock. It, it happens a lot with people who immigrate into other countries, you know, from different culture, from cultures that are very, you know, very strict. You know, you come from a country, you know, I went to high school with kids that their parents had already betrothed them in, in their country. Yeah, I remember that. There were two girls that I went to school, high school with. They were only 14 and 16, but each of them had a, their parents, they had people to marry. Their family had already arranged these things. So imagine that those girls are now in their teens or 20s and they're they saying to their families well i don't want to do that the culture shock imagine that so your mental health it's a lot of those little traumas that we have but we have to learn how to i don't want to say overcome but just you know work on them seek therapists um accept that something is hurting you. You know, a lot of time we just, we're, we're, we are unwilling to accept that, you know, maybe some stuff that happened in the past hurt us, but then you compartmentalize and then you get triggered by it. So let's continue. I said that the first thing in healing any trauma is recognition. Recognize that something has hurt you badly. You can't heal something that you've pushed aside in great in your mind. When you do such thing, you compartmentalize your hurt and eventually something or someone will trigger that round that wound, excuse me. Remember how I was talking in my conversation with Natisha and I said to her someone had hurt me inadvertently and that's exactly what happened. The person was going through so much, but they were unwilling to talk about what they were going through. They didn't want to talk about it. And I wanted them to open up, but I didn't want to invade their privacy. I didn't want for them to feel like I was pushing, you know, too hard. I wanted them to come, but they didn't want to come. They didn't want to come. They didn't want to talk about it. And what happened? That person literally compartmentalized the hurt. So they just push it away, push it away as if it never happened. Meanwhile, you, this shit is eating you up, but you don't want to talk about it. And they end up repeating those cycles. Of course, you're going to repeat those cycles. Sometimes you got to sit in your hurt. Sometimes you have, this is also, I always felt like I could work with alcoholic because as someone who really loves to enjoy alcohol, babe, I could go months without having a drink. You know why? Because I don't drink my feelings away. I don't drink my feelings away. You hit the bottle when you're trying to literally take away the pain. You don't want to face that reality. You don't want to face that hurt. You don't want to face what happened. So you hit the bottle or you hit the drug and you continuously do it. You reach for the bottle. No, you got to be able to not do it. I remember one of the work that I did prior to coming to Haiti. It was so bad. Oh my God, it was terrible. It was one of the worst jobs that I ever had. And I would every evening, after work, I would go down the harbor in, in, in Boston. I would have a drink. 
I did it for a week. And then I said, you need to quit that job. Otherwise, you're going to be an alcoholic. Because every night before I left to come to my house, I would, because just to decompress, it was so terrible. The organization was just the partnership, the way that they had the partnership going on. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I quit it, the job. I had to, it was driving me crazy. So I had to quit the job. It's either that or you become an alcoholic. So it's the same thing. You got to face thing like what, what's making you hit the bottle? What's making you reach that bottle? You can reach that bottle for a good drink, a good time, feeling good. Yeah. But your feelings away hurt. You should not reach a bottle to drink your feelings. You should, a lot of times you should learn how to face those hurt. Be in that hurt. Know that you were hurt. Be in it and release it. Move on, right? So I said, once you recognize your hurt, you can seek help. If it isn't too deep, identify a safe individual where you can share your trauma. Some trauma requires professional work. If you've been abused sexually, verbally, physically, it would be great to seek professional support. Professional support can still be someone you trust. In addition, it as a person who is unbiased, has expert in their field, have the proper resources to help you manage your trauma. Professional help is different. You know, if you think about the woman that I interviewed, she's a professional in her field. So not only does she have those resources, I may have insight. I may be able to support you, but I wouldn't be able to be professionally um, able to help a rape victim, a drug addict. No, I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, safely say that I can help someone who's a drug addict because I don't have those credentials. So this is how you identify, depending on what you suffered. If you suffered severe abuse, maybe you need those professional help. That doesn't mean that you're crazy. You just need someone who has other resources. You just need someone who can better help you cope with what you're going through in order to do the work, right? So I said, nine times out of 10, your mental health will not be result, um, revolve with medicine. No, your mental health, people who keep having all those pills, baby, you're going to be in for a long time because these are not a fixer. Okay. I said it will be resolved through release, release of your pain, release of your hurt, release of your negative belief about yourself. Connecting with your higher power, right? Acknowledging that you are a divine being, reaching your next level. Understand that we all can make room for improvement. What's the point of going about life unhappy, miserable, carrying so much pain, anger, resentment? Take your power back. Take control of your own well-being and invest in yourself. A couple of years back, when I left Haiti in 2015 and I went to the U.S., I had a lot of resentment. I hated my parents. I hated those individuals with a passion. I felt that they were the cause of my misery. I felt like they were the cause of me constantly having to go back to the U.S. because it would be so bad living here and I had to go breed. And one time, you know, someone had hurt me very, very hard and the person came to the United States and I lended my support. But I never forgave the person. So one day I was getting up to go meet with that person and I started to cry and my aunt was there she said why are you crying and I just couldn't talk and I told her everything that the person had done to me and I said that I hated that person and my aunt said to me 
if you keep on holding on to all those pain, you are going to die of a heart attack. My aunt, a woman with very little quote unquote education. I never forgot that. She sat me down and she said, you have to learn how to forgive people. She said to me, you got to remember that a lot of time people do things to you that they are unaware of. She said, but I would hate for you to walk around with all those hate because you are going to die. She said, those hatred that you have in your heart, eventually you're going to have a heart attack because you're not releasing. You're not letting go. And I've been back in my home. I had to do a lot of work. And still now, as I said to you before, I still need healing in so many other areas of my life. But I don't want to give anyone the power to hold my joy. I don't want to give you that power. I'm not giving anyone the power to make me feel unhappy, to take away at my smile, baby. I got a beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. Everything that I do, it has to be that I am joyful in what I'm doing. And I wish the same for you guys. Everything that you do, there needs to be joy in it. Work on your healing. It's going to be really, really freeing for you. When you get up and you're happy, just because, just because it's a good day, just because. So I wish you the best. Do not forget that you can have access to all of those articles when you participate into the coaching and the mentorship program. If you are not participating into the coaching and the mentorship program, you can have access to those articles by emailing us. And then we can forward those resources to you. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for being here with me. I will see you guys not next week for a topic, but the following week. Because this week I have a lot of work to do. So I don't believe that I will be on. However, I might just do my best. But maybe it's going to be the following week that I'm going to be here with you all and discuss a topic. Thank you so much for being here with me. Hopefully you get something out of this and you know, you learn something.